Hello and welcome my friends to this podcast about all kinds of yarny things, yarny makings um, and yes about yarn too because I am the dyer behind Zia Wools. My name is Doc and I'm coming to you from New Mexico in the beautiful desert here where it's not too too hot and um, not yet at least I should say and I have just been out of town celebrating our daughter's graduation from SESU in San Diego and um, lucky enough we had my brother visiting from Germany and also uh, my son was turning 25 while we were still in California and also that was Mother's Day. It was like a like one party after the other and we stayed in this beautiful airbnb and it all was just just really a great vacation i did not knit as much as i usually do when i travel but um yeah i mean you probably figure it out to why that was a lot going on a lot with um hanging out with uh, family and um, also with friends and yeah and now i'm back home and kind of like breathing deep and um yeah thinking back and remembering how fun it was and also on the way back my brother and i my husband added a few days because he drove home with um his or our daughter's car because she is currently on her graduation trip to thailand she loves it so much and um, so my husband he he drove home and extended the trip and uh, spent a few days in Tucson and my brother and I we added um, roughly two days in Palm Springs and in desert um, I mean in desert hot springs that's where we stayed and we had this super cute airbnb and palm springs was just really special also because ralph he's, he did a lot of research so it was kind of like this non-stop fun stuff that happened in my life and um usually i get a little bit antsy when i don't get to knit as much as i would like but in this case it was all good it was great and um on the way going there, I was hoping I'd be able to stop at Isabel's Yarn Parlor in Wickenburg, but no chance. It would have meant a detour, but on the way back, I had the chance to stop in there and I'm, I brought some yarns that I, um, ha I have projects in mind that I will talk about later and yeah lots of ideas and no guilt at all about casting on even more projects um i was talking to my friend in germany today and he was asking me so how many works in projects do you actually have right now and i have done the math and not even yeah, not sure. Let's say I have four pairs of socks, could be five, that I have started. And um, that means eight shawls, yes. Five sweaters, yes. One hat, okay. Like four pairs of socks and four blankets hey it's all so much fun and sometimes you just have to have a cast on party yes so what will i tell you about first yes you probably saw it right away i have managed to fix the problem with this top and i even yeah, I um, figured it out what I had done 
wrong last time when I tried to split for the sleeves. So let me talk about this. The pattern is called Summer Light and the designer's name is Sumi Okada. And I did not swatch, yes. And I blame my friend um, Andrea for that because she's like, I once I swatched and that's my worst sweater. The fit was horrible. And I thought, well, I can get away with not swatching this one. What do you think? It's okay, isn't it? Think it turned out okay there is a few things that i meant to tell you i used 3.75 millimeter needles and for the the edges three millimeter needles and my yarn was a kind gift by a friend and it is soft silk by bc garn i think it's made in europe somewhere and it's 100 percent silk sorry the the tag is quite faded um but i have used only <laughs> buckle up only about 157 grams and I did want it cropped so I could possibly wear it on top of a dress yeah with spaghetti straps or whatever like a light summer dress and um, I haven't done that yet because it is still a summer top with fringes now here are my thoughts about this too tight <laughs> that's where I messed up I probably should have chosen a larger size <sighs> I think that would have just added one more pattern repeat but it would have given me the chance to um, adjust the width of the sleeves which are tight right now but um, the body is, is really correct. I mean, this is a good width for me, right? And, um, but I would have some, then I would have had some extra stitches for the sleeves and a little bit more for the body. So I was thinking that I might make this again because in the end, I really liked it. What had happened when I talked to you about my problems with this, when I wanted to split the sleeves, the sleeve stitches, I mean, it's barely anything that is added on. And by the way, this is a free pattern. So what had happened is it, I counted the stitches and nothing worked out when I did that. And it was late at night I want to say past 11 o'clock and it just in the end it turned out that and I hope I'm not making that up but I'm pretty sure that's what I figured out that it wasn't symmetrical that when she split the sleeves off and that just I can't do that that's no no, it all needs to be symmetrical. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But now it is symmetrical. And in case you wonder, I put one pattern repeat. And so that is easily adjustable. So I put one pattern repeat of in the middle of the sleeve. I mean, I still call it sleeve. You know what I mean. It's not really a sleeve, but still. And then I added 10 stitches on both sides. So I really changed the stitch count that I ended up having for the sleeves. And that's quite a large cast on of stitches under the arm. So I knew I didn't want to get too, too wide with the arm opening because I didn't want this gaping either. So it's okay. I mean, 
it's okay. I would have preferred it a little bit wider, but it is what it is and I'm happy and I will wear it. Yes. And then let me arrange here a little bit because it's always a bit complicated because I do the two podcasts and I film upstairs in my daughter's room. But everything is downstairs, of course. So the other thing that I finished and I brought less knitting than usual on my trip to California, but I still only touched this, which was easy enough because I was here and I could just do stock in it. So that was growing quite a bit on the in, in the car drive. But I also finished my beautiful Tsalva Pal socks. And it is a coincidence that they turned out pretty similar yet not at all there's the white in here yeah well i don't need to tell you what you see anyways so i'm glad i got these done i've wanted i've been wanting to make some longer leg socks for myself for a while so i'm glad i got these and this was a 150 grams uh, ball of yarn that I had gotten from my yarn store here in Albuquerque a few years ago. I love the retro vibes of the colors and that's why I just had to. Normally I buy sock yarn like this in Germany where it's made but um, in this case that's okay. And um, what else, what else did I mean to tell you? So I wanted a longer leg. Oh yes, and this is like a thicker. This is not the standard um, uh, weight of the Zauberball, but it's, they call it sechsfach. So, um, but I tried to go up a needle size, but it was too loose, the gauge. I didn't like the gauge that I was getting. So I stuck with my normal go-to sock, recipe with 2.5 millimeter needles and four times 16 stitches on my DPNs and uh, top down and heel flap and all of that jazz. And um, like I said, I got 50 grams left. So I might even be able to get a pair of shorties, another pair of shorties if you, well, this was not intentional at all that I, the foot and the leg are the same length. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So maybe I get a pair of shorties or I'll see what I'll do with this. Um, <laughs> and while I was moving around, I could tell, ah, here, I didn't even say a word about the fringes on my top. Yes, I still have to weave in the ends. I'll do that soon. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to um, uh, run an errand today and then I thought, oops, cannot wear this. <laughs> but I can wear it for you guys. So, what is next? Remember this? The outline shawl by Beata Jacek of hedgehog, hedgehog Fibers. I just love this thing so much. It's mindless, it's gorgeous, and it's a great project for leftovers. In my case, I'm using mini skeins and bits of like test spins and stuff like that that I have from spinning and but of course it's designed to use leftovers hand dyed leftovers and actually you can do here whatever you want I would say that everything will just look fantastic because of the beautiful wavy pattern yeah 
still in love, still plucking along right now, looking forward to the inner part of this guy. Yeah. And I think since you saw this last, I'm not sure if I already had that bright pink. But when I picked it up the other day, I was in the transition between the light purple and the, the rosy pink somewhere here. So I added another probably like four inches or so. And then what next? Oh my God, you guys. I neglected showing you the hat that I made last time. I showed it in the German podcast, but I forgot. I don't know what happened to it. I think it was in between the pillows here next to me or something. But I came up with a pattern for this. And I am still not 100% happy with what I did here, even though it's a great hat for a child and I will probably give it to my goddaughter. But, oh, you may wonder, what did she use? She used Zia Wool's Velvet, which is a baby Suri Alpaca silk blend. And I held that with a sport weight yarn and that was a leftover bit and that's all I have left over now. So it just worked out great for the hat. And I have already pulled out this for the next version and I have already written the chart for the next one. Now I just got to got to got to get going with it and to work on that but I haven't started yet I need to find a matching sport or DK weight blue probably going to use a DK because that's a little bit more common so people don't get confused what do you think yeah and then I'm just going to start the next version on this and to get that done hopefully eventually at some point and i will keep you posted i must say probably now in the summer this i won't really push forward with this i'll see it always depends on your mood you know what are we up to i have like you saw on my list a total of eight shawls in the works and I brought you the two that I have worked on that are still in bags in the in a project bag and this is the beautiful bag that was a gift from Selma when she when we first met at the Winslow retreat last year I love this bag and I am making a, uh, I'm knitting a shawl by Melanie Berg. Sorry, this is noisy. And it is a large asymmetrical triangle called Only the Good Vibes. And I'm using Zia Wool's Sugar Loaf, which I, ha I have talked about so many times. You probably will yawn if I tell you again how much I love it. I love it so much. I love knitting up Sugar Loaf. It's a light fingering weight with 540 yards to the four ounce skein and I love dyeing it up also because it's just so, it takes up the dyes so nicely and it's a 100% super wash yarn. And this is where I am. Yep, just plucking away. 
took it on my trip did not touch it at all and this is kind of um and it's okay for a pattern mm, not too too complicated i just put use some tape to mark my spot where i am in the chart when it's the pattern section and then i also have the zaria shawl which is in one in a bag that i made it's a pattern by amber o'brien and it's a little a tiny bit more complicated but not complicated complicated but i gotta check off every row so i don't lose my spot because that's how she she gives you a road map for the whole shawl and it's such an awesome construction i'm really looking forward to having this done eventually i knitted a little bit more on it so this has also seen a tiny bit of growth give me a second i will and then i will show you the my tell you more about my yarns that will need a good blocking of course as you can tell so I'm using a yarn that I won from Rachel in a giveaway and it was, the color was a little bit too light. I can't even remember in what sense, but I thought, hmm, that needs a bit more turquoise or whatever I thought. And I turned it into this and I love it. And I am also using this, which is the same yarn as this one and the yarn is called perennial it's a buttery soft alpaca blend i should put on my glasses i don't know where they went ha huh. so i was thinking i'm gonna use this up it was not a full skein and then as soon as i'm done i'm gonna somehow blend it into this color because they're all gonna go together nicely and this yarn is 60% superwash merino 25% sorry alpaca 50 nylon and it has 497 yards to 100 grams by Kelbourne Woolens. I love, love, love the feel of this. And gosh, maybe one day I'm gonna buy enough for a sweater. I would love that. <laughs> and then did you just hear me sigh? I just remembered all the sweater quantities of hand spun yarn that I also would love to knit up and turn into a sweater. Yep, so this is, like I said, the Zaria shawl by Amber O'Brien. And I haven't said that yet today, but everything that I, I'm, I'm really very good about putting everything that I'm working on or that I have cast on or that I'm planning to cast on. All of that is in Ravelry where I am paper dag. That's my online handle. That has been my online handle for probably 30 years and um yeah and so it's even this is all about yarn that's where i am paper dag okay what's next let's just mix it all up this is a skein of hand spun yarn i showed you the braid last time 
love this it is Corydale as far as I remember let's make sure that I'm not telling you any BS I wasn't this is indeed Corydale and it's kind of like a somewhere between a it's probably a DK weight I would say yeah finished that even before I went for the, on, on my trip on our trip the rest from the sweater and then oh yes I picked up another pair of socks and um, <laughs> this is totally ridiculous I was at a thrift store in somewhere by Joshua Tree State uh, National Park National Park and I was we were browsing antique stores and that thrift store and I found this isn't this awesome it even has an extra compartment on the back what did I pay I think two bucks yeah and this is, I uh, so I had the other socks finished that I showed you, but I wanted to put a pair of socks in there, even though it could hold a larger project too. So this is the sock that I have been working on from this, uh, with this fabulous German yarn. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I love this so much. And where is the dyer i am sorry i will have to show you another time i did not bring the label and i can't remember i'm sure the dyer is on instagram so i will tell you next time i promise sock sock yarn i mean sock project and then i have purchased at Isabella's yarn parlor is that what it's called hmm. Isabel's parlor a yarn boutique not just Isabel I don't know <clears throat> sounds good Isabel's yarn parlor all in one what do you think right <laughs> If you've been here for a very long time, you may remember that I used to buy German Lana Grossa so, uh, yarns every summer. Because in my the next town next to my hometown, there is a Lana Grossa store. So I would always shop there. This yarn was on sale at the yarn parlor. Let's just call it the yarn parlor. And so you would buy one ball of yarn and get one for free. Love it. Who wouldn't love a good sale, right? So this is it, and it's Linnea Pura. And the content is, I want to say, 80% viscose and 20% linen. It's all Selma's fault because, oops, look at that. Because she was talking about all these summer tops. In the end, I wanted to be safe. Oh, the color is called Kelp. What a great name. And this is called Solid Lino. 80% rec linen, whatever that is, but it says viscose and 20% linen. And recommended um, needle size is 3.5 to 4. And I was thinking about making maybe a cardigan or something, but I decided on this gorgeous pattern the honeycomb by ayako no sorry no i apologize by yumiko alexander i got her mixed up with 
um, another designer. Sorry about that. I love this pattern and I love what I love about it is that it is asymmetrical and I've had it in my queue for a very long time. Hopefully you can see this. So this one side of the sweater has this pattern and that's where it's shorter. And it has just three quarter sleeves. Yeah, I am really looking forward to this, but <laughs> you know me, I'm looking forward to everything that I start working on. So the other day I spent a long time in front of my computer making a decision for this green yarn and I also wanted to find a pattern and make a decision for a yarn that has been gifted to me by a friend visiting an Instagram, an online friend. We've never met in person, but she came to America. We were hoping we could hang out a little bit, but it was kind of crazy, completely crazy. When she was in Albuquerque, I was in San Diego. Then she was in Tucson when I was on the way back to Albuquerque and my husband actually was in Tucson, but she was so sweet. She went to the yarn store. She bought some of my yarns here in Albuquerque but she also, she left a gift for me. I did not know what it was. And I went to the yarn store and um, sure enough, she had gifted me a lace yarn dyed by a German dyer. And this is the yarn. And I found a pattern for it. Isn't this gorgeous? This is so, so, so me. Super, super in love with it right away. And the dyer is called um, Sternenstaub, so German. And I started a triangular shawl. And it knits up so beautifully, don't you think? So the pattern i'm going to tell you the name in a second the pattern has this um lacy spine and then it ends with um, more lace of course and the i'm sorry that was loud and this is the name of the pattern and yes this is a free pattern so sweet love it and i'm using as the pattern requires 3.5 millimeter needles and it's kind of really it's not too hard to knit at least so far it's really like i'm i'm just this is easy i want to say because you only need to pay attention in the center but here it's just stockinette so that's really nice and i thought i will show you also my other option and i think i was not quite sure how much i, th I think it was something about the amount of yarn that i would have needed for this one which is also a free pattern and I did not want to run out of yarn and I don't think I will with that pattern with this one I was not quite sure but I thought I have to show you because it's beautiful and I'm sure if you have a little bit more yardage that would be a really nice one I did find also another isn't that pretty here with my laundry basket which I use to bring everything upstairs. <laughs> very photo, very decorative. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I found another free pattern, which I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I wouldn't mind making this, but I've had eight shawls. 
I think I need to finish something. <laughs> so not yet, but I can show you, maybe you love it so much. Like I said, a free pattern, it's called Wiz and it is by Nadia Cretin Lechene. Yeah, really, really pretty. So, and then, as if that was not enough yet, I stumbled upon another, another gorgeous pattern, which screamed at me, you must make me. <laughs> and so I decided, okay, I'm going to get the pattern. This is not a free pattern. It gets you from Ravelry to a website where you buy the pattern. And I did want to be a little bit further along before I show you, but alas, I am not. However, who cares? I can show you my yarn now, which side is the front, and this is where I am. Not very far, like I said, but I will show you what this will become when it is grown up. The pattern is called the Desert Sun. And yes, this is something that is dear to my heart because I love living in this desert. And the original shawl is so bright and vibrant and beautiful. And I thought, oh my God, this has to be done. Now, hear me out, guess what? This pattern has only one project and it may even been be this one, the designers. So I thought we should show the designers some love. It doesn't, I know it doesn't mean that there's, that nobody has knitted this, I'm sure of it. It's uh, published in 2020 and so, but you know, there need to be more projects on Ravelry. So I decided let's do a knit along. Okay, I hope you will join me. Like I said, this is called the Desert Sun. It's really a reasonably priced pattern. I paid $6 and I hope that you will join me in a little knit along for the Desert Sun. Bye. Na um, cool. Natalia Moreva is her name and it's called Culabra Designs. I don't know. I'm pronouncing it like she is not American, but the pictures are clearly maybe Phoenix, Tucson, somewhere in between Arizona and New Mexico right so i need to tell you this i i myself i'm german this is not my first language so i'm sure i have published patterns i've published a few patterns but i know some of these are kind of like a bit hard to read maybe for someone who does nothing but um patterns published by Native American speakers. This one, I also, it gave me the thought that to her language approach is a little bit different, maybe than what I was used to. So I really wanted to get going on the pattern and I wanted you, if you want to make this, I wanted you immediately to be aware of something that I had a little bit of trouble with 
where I it was not super duper clear for me. There were some typos. It says garter rides instead of ridges. I'm sure that was autocorrect <laughs> of her program that she used. And this was whatever, not important. But super important for you is that, um, you know, if you like jump in, do you do that? I definitely do. I jump right into the pattern and I want to get going. I want to cast on and I want to knit. And I'm like, what? First row, what? Second row, what? 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 And then I took a step back, read the introduction, and it says that the 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 right the wrong side rows are always the same. So read it, read thoroughly, pay attention when you get going on this. The wrong side is always done the same way. And then she talks row one, row two, row three, but that is always referring to the right side. Not like usually it's you have row row two would be the, the wrong side. No, not here. Okay, so be aware of that. And then she also writes, um, place a marker after the first three stitches. But within these three stitches, you already work an increase, which means I mean, which to me, it made me think, wait a minute, am I going to do the, the, am I going to, no, wait a second. Am I going to, yeah, then place the marker after three stitches, place a marker after three stitches, but also within the first three stitches, you work an increase. So I did not know, is she going, is she counting the increase already? Is that a stitch? One, two, three. The third one being the increase. Or is it one, two, three stitches plus the increase? And that is what it is. And it was just, maybe you wouldn't have a problem with that or trouble reading it. It was just me. I had to, I tend to overthink sometimes. So, but what else, what else? You're going to wonder what colors is she going to use? So I went stash, stash diving. Mm, I love stash diving. I love it so much. So after this interruption, let me get back to my yarns. I have chosen a bunch of yarns from my stash but also some Zia Wool's yarns to supplement and I started off with some very dark green yarns and then I ended up choosing this one which is a vortex yarn a single 115 grams and I thought for sure I won't run out with this one and then next is well i created a i don't want to call it a gradient because it's not really a gradient but these i show you the all the colors that i picked as of now i do pretty I am really, really not sure that I will indeed use all of these, but I can, as you can tell, I'm for sure going to use these two. I wanted something a little bit lighter that had still some hints of green that I wanted to start off with. And then this one, because I've had it for so long, I wanted to ha use this one. And then I have a bit of uncertainty about this one because it's really kind of sticks out a lot but I'm thinking that can add a lot of visual interest to the finished shawl. I definitely do want to use this one because it is Moonsong, the colorway of the year 2024 
and I wanted to knit with it very badly. So that will be perfect. I am not really sure about adding this one, which is bird song. Did I say this was moon song, right? Yeah, I hope. And then the last one is Hemes Falls. Also a fairly new colorway. I had also considered this one as my contrast color for the stripes in between instead of this but then I thought mm, no I want a high contrast in this case yeah so what do I have here this is my Zewell's Roadrunner singles um, a lucky one of a kind lucky dog it's called kinky pink one of three skeins I that I had dyed this one is a storyteller from Lake Tahoe, really ancient stash. And I feel like they're closing down their business. Yeah. And like I said, the dark green is Vortex. Local to me also. Wooly Lizard from Colorado from the yarn store in Moab in July of 2020. That's when I got this one, 100%. Um, merino also, and yeah. And then I, when I got into Zewell's yarns, it was really because I thought, wow, I need something that picks up a little bit of this purple in here and that's when I found this one and like I said this stands out like a sore thumb but it also can be awesome yeah so probably I don't know I shall see I shall see so I don't know if I'm going to use all the skeins because that's really a lot of partial skeins. But I'm also thinking if the size doesn't turn out the way I want, I can just keep going. This should be very easy to turn into a larger size shawl. I will see. I am using size four millimeter needles and um like i said there's no projects and we need to add some projects to the pattern page because i really i was i was really sad that i could not see how this beautiful pattern looks when it's done with different yarns with variegated yarns with different colors and so on yeah so that is that and i i have one more thing that i am thinking about um making soon but because i forgot to bring the yarn i will show you in the next episode maybe will i run yes i will run hold on this is the other yarn that I bought in Wickenburg at Isabel's Yarn Parlor. It's not called that way. Wickenburg, Arizona. And um, yeah, variegated. And what I plan to make is a, a vest that has a tie in the front on the bottom and the tie comes grows out of the ribbing it's not really ribbing it's kind of like a just a garter garter edge i should say not ribbing the garter edge that frames the front opening and it's kind of like overcut shoulders and I saw this vest at my yarn store and I loved it so much but nobody knows what the pattern is and it's in a it's knitted in a chevron 
zigzag pattern and I now because nobody can figure out what the pattern is I took detailed pictures and I will figure out how it is done and I did not find anything here um, that um, really um, that I loved to make the vest and so but when I saw this in uh, Wickenburg I thought oh my god this is gonna be so nice and the original um, sample is also knitted in a variegated yarn so I'm pretty sure this is gonna work nicely and this is all I have to tell you today I hope you are all doing well and um, enjoying the, the 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 end of spring easing into the summer and um, whatever you are knitting on or crocheting on or fiber artsing on right now and um, yes happy knitting until I see you again hopefully soon bye